So I changed the title from delusion to ignorance. <clears throat> Why delusion ultimately results into ignorance? Delusion, like driving a car with a thick layer of the dirt on the windshield. So when I communicate to the world outside what happens, there is a dirt. I have a wrong perception. Uh, just a month ago, just maybe two months ago, beautiful women are always beautiful. So that women called me and she said that you have Well, how should I say? You have you have differences with another women. Agree with it. I said, why should I agree? It is your perception. It is not my perception. I don't have any any problem with anyone. Even if one opposes, I don't have any problem. Perfect example of a delusion. Unless I clean the windshield in my mind, enables clearer vision of the path. I see you are crazy. That's a wrong perception. I am suffering. That is a wrong perception. That is a delusion. I have adverse situation in my life. That is delusion. My life has been hell. That is a delusion. Because my partner divorced, or my I got married, I should not have got married. It is just like driving a car with a thick layer of the dirt on the windshield. My mind has to be pure. If it is not pure, it is going to cause a delusion. Delusion is like searching for the lost keys under a street lamp simply because there is a more light there, but you have lost the keys in your house. That is what I have been saying, that I'm searching peace and happiness outside in a relationship, in a situation. It is not there. A seeker knows it clearly. Seeker becomes aware of it. And that is where the journey of the Eastern wisdom begins. I will never talk to this guy. I lost key to the wisdom. And I still have the emotional dependence and the intellectual paralysis. And that results into anxiety, duality, conflict, depression. Think of it. Delusion is like, delusion is like, <clears throat> because we are moving the main theme of the entire Eastern wisdom, what we say, tamasoma jyotirgamaya. Moving from ignorance to wisdom, but that ignorance is caused by the delusion, and the delusion is caused by the seven factors. And there is a five step process we have to work on our mind. So, delusion uh, is like wandering in a house of mirrors where nothing is as it appears. Oh, there are many mirrors here, everywhere, in all the walls. What that means? Your mind says, my honey, has a I have a problem with My son, I have a problem. That is the house of mirrors. I'm not thinking about myself. I'm not aware of myself. But I'm more and more aware of others. This is not going to help you. This is not going to help you. Not at all. Delusion. 
Delusion is the greatest enemy. I, we have been working on this. Delusion distorts the reality like the waves tearing up the sediments at the bottom of the pond. <clears throat> we don't allow the water to settle to reveal the clarity. Remember this. Now, with these examples, if you look at these seven factors, your mind will become clean. Foolishness. It results into foolishness. Why there is a foolishness? Because the mind is constantly scattered, distracted, disjointed, lacking mental clarity, scattered. <clears throat> These women want just forced me. No, no, you said you have a differences with the other women. You agree to it. I said, why should I agree? I don't have it. So it is the result first of the foolishness. And then the second layer is the scattered mind. Third layer is the attachment. Fourth layer is the emotional dependence. Fifth layer is the selfishness. Sixth layer, the intellectual paralysis. Seventh layer, now my mind is already wandering. And these seven factors continuously causes a delusion in my life. You wake up in the morning and you have a particular thought, and it, now you are deluded. <clears throat> hammer the delusion. You have to hammer the delusion, my friends. Five step process we have understood. First, I have to challenge the false assumption. Any thought, let the thought come and then become aware of their thought about a person, about a situation, about a relationship, and then see is it a false assumption or a right? Means what? I should have a discerning mindset. I should not have a judgmental mindset. You see the judgmental mindset? Likes, dislikes, I like you, I dislike you. You are good, you are bad. And I should have a discerning. What, what happens in discerning mind? You are good for yourself, you are bad for yourself. I'm free. So once we have that discerning mindset, then only we can move to what we say the process of listening and learning, and that opens up in our mind, oh, here is an attachment, here is a detachment, so I should not worry about it. Let me see the world as it is. And it, then it results into dispassion. Dispassion results into steadiness of the mind, and that is a natural steadiness. It is not focused mind, and that steadiness of the mind you sit in meditation, you are absorbed, and you awaken to your real self. So this is the second step. That is what the satsang is, satsangatte. I have already spoken a couple of times. And what happens now? <clears throat> now, in this moment of discernment, you see here is a duality and a delusion, and here is a discernment and dispassion. You can see the mind moves to discernment and dispassion, you are happy, you are joyful, you are clear, and the moment your mind slips into the delusion and the duality, you feel a sense of anxiety, emotional upset, and it happens. You can see it clearly, you can experience it clear. You have such a clarity. That is the third step process, the five step process, and the fourth one, the now, first time you recognize, we have understood intellectually what is false in the real self. Now we experience what is false in the real self. And the delusion has no place. So once you have that sense, that experience, oh, no, 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 I'm not going there. Instant awareness is there. No, I'm not going there. I'm not criticizing. I'm not blaming and complaining anyone. No, peace and happiness is with me. That is the power of hammering the delusion. You need not to go to a uh, doctor to treat yourself. You are self. You are settled into the self-knowledge. 
settling into the self-knowledge. And the fifth step, if you see that all the five steps, all the five steps comes to the same thing. The fifth step, we say work on the mind, instead the mind is working on you. Always remember, is the mind working on you? Delusion. All the seven steps will take over you. You start working on the mind, you have to start with challenging the false assumption. You have to continue listening, consistent listening and learning. You have to move into the state of dispassion. And ultimately, you will recognize the false versus the real. It is the seven plus the five. Seven factors which causes the delusion and five factors which removes the delusion. It's a five. You can say it is a five-step journey. But if you are not clearly understanding that what causes me the delusion, you will continue to blame and complain and react. And that sense of anxiety, emotional dependence will continue to work in your life. Sir, can I? I have got a job. And uh, so can I attend these sessions? <coughs> Can I listen to these sessions at my home? I said, that is, you have already taken a decision. Why are you asking me? We carry very subtle level of delusion in our life. Now reverse this process. You are in the moment of anxiety. You don't feel the sense of freedom. You are in delusion. Think of it. Think in this way. That will help you to get rid of this enemy delusion, which, which results into ignorance. And because at the level of the ignorance, I cannot work unless I understand the delusion in the right way, unless I question my question everything, all my false assumption, the very thought process in my life. I don't have money, that's why I'm in stress. Uh, so it means money has to do with the stress. I have a lot of money, that is why I have stress. So again, the money has to do with the stress. You, you see the sense of emotional dependence? My honey doesn't love me. Uh, better, so that you start loving yourself. <laughs> there are millions and millions of thoughts that causes the delusion. The first step involves inquiring, who am I really? We must challenge the notions of identifying with the temporary societal roles like the spouse, the parent, or a professional status. Exactly at 7.50, there were only two people. I said, no, let me start. Unless we challenge this false assumption, it is not going to work. There is no proxy for it. You cannot have a proxy for it. And the second is that list con consistent listening and learning, because the teacher has to present the same topic differently. So sometimes what happens in your mind, oh, this, this my problem is yet to be solved. Even though I'm talking the same thing again and again. But you know, I express it in a different way. So that the way your mind is perceiving the delusion, you can get rid of the delusion. By learning these simple principles. When Master says delusion is ignorance, ignorance is false, and wisdom is the wisdom takes you to the real delusion to the discernment. So every master explains in a different way. Why? Because so that your mind can dig inside and can understand, here is a delusion. I can bet you that you will be ever free. Every day you wake up in the morning, you have a sense of freedom. If the seven factors are not there. Or, or in another way, you apply these five remedies.
challenging the false assumption, satsang, consistent listening and learning. So you spend the time, you spend your precious time. I can understand. You are very airfully busy, but you are spending an air precious time here. And I don't want to waste even a single minute of yours. You have already seen I start the journey. So think in that way, this one hour is going to bring about a transformation in 23 hours. If I contemplate and reflect. So that is what the listening, learning, contemplation, reflection and the practice. I have created an abbreviation, you might be aware. Listening and learning, LL, CRP, contemplation, reflection, and practice. That is the second uh, five-step remedy. This is the second step remedy. The third step, then we recognize. Now I have a cognition ability. Here is a delusion duality, and here is a discernment and discretion. You are free. You feel the sense of. But that experience comes in the fourth step. Here is a false, here is a, here is a real. So, and then what happens? The fifth one, ultimately, I have to work on the mind. I understand this is how I have to work on the mind. I have not to force someone to agree that the other guy is crazy. Or I have not to say anything. I have to hold my mind. That is what the working on the mind is. Many people keep their selfishness or the big ego inside and they say, oh, I have understood you. Don't understand me, understand yourself. Ego always likes to understand others with a judgmental mind. Eastern wisdom always likes to understand others, everyone, every situation with discernment and discretion. You, even your relationship, you are free. You are not getting carried away. That is going to bring about a tremendous change in your life. I can bet you. And it has been. It has been bringing those changes in your life. So again, remember, remember, delusion is a false perception about the reality that obscures the clarity and causes the suffering. I'm, I'm expressing in a different way. So I have to recognize this subject. Delusion distorts understanding of the self. Relationship. Delusion distorts my life's temporary aspects as permanent. Deluded assumption about permanent identify things causes causes materialism no you know, i'm not material i'm a spiritual person no it will not work that way well we normally talk i'm not a religious person i'm a spiritual person and then you are you normally get attracted by the spiritual person but they keep the materialism by identification in their mind that is very much present that is a part of the delusion. It has nothing to do with the spirituality. Unless delusion is removed, one keeps chasing temporary pleasures which cannot provide lasting fulfillment. That thought is settled in my head how it can settle by the self-inquiry. There is only one word to remove the delusion, self-inquiry. Who am I? What is my true identity beyond societal labels? 
I have a label of a teacher just now for an hour. <coughs> Can I remove that label once that session is for done, finished? Yes. <coughs> you are free. But if you keep that label, then you will try to boss your relations everywhere. Then you'll have a problem. You are a mother when you are in front of your kids. That's all. The role of a mother is gone. No, now the children are gone. So my mother label thinks, you know, he's doing good and he's not doing good. So I have to talk. And now the mind is creating a delusion. So these thought processes have to translate into action. What is that action? Your behavior and attitude. So you are living in a delusion and you fight with it. You have a problem. You have a problem and you say, my kids have a problem. <laughs> you see problem you have. You have a problem of delusion and you blame that, you know, my kids have a problem. <laughs> a perfect example of a delusion. Ashok? <laughs> <laughs> this is what we need to understand. I'm not saying, I'm not saying have a blind belief. I'm saying understand it. We all are wise people. We all are seekers. Understand it. So very understanding opens up your mind. It drops and dissolves the emotional uh, dependence and intellectual paralysis. We have already paralyzed the intellect. How? You are the worst guy. Or you are the best guy because I'm attached with you. Or you are the worst guy because I'm detached. Do you see? This is an experience of intellectual paralysis. Can there be a perfect worst guy? Can there be a perfect good guy? Think. And what I have to do? No, no, I have to do emotional dependence. I believe you are getting it. You see that? No, I have to do. You are my son. I have to guide you. How many people you have guided? Have you guided yourself? Are you living in peace and happiness? Unnecessary. Let the kids grow. Let them fail. Let them suffer. That is their way of learning. Well, if they are listening, it's good. If they are not listening, that is also good. That is what the point of discernment is. You are ready. And now you know how to present yourself free from the emotional dependence and the intellectual paralysis, and the people are going to listen. To. It happens. It happens. Now just think for a while that you are living in a delusion. What challenges you have at different levels? At the mental level. Perpetual restlessness you have. Hesitation in your mind. At the mental level, I'm talking. Rigid perspective. You have a rigidity in your perspective. Closed mindedness to the higher truth. I'm talking about the challenges people have when they suffer from this delusion in their life. A sense of rigidity is there. People should realize all the time that I am a rich guy. I am the poorest of poor guys. Then what? What do you have to do with it? No. You see the mind. Difficulty concentrating. If you have a difficulty concentrating, if you have a constant distraction, you have a doubt, you have suspicion, you have anxiety. And all these mental factors plague your decisions in direction. I'm just talking about the daily symptoms in your life. In life, choosing wrongly, 
under delusion, you have a clouded perception. So your choice is always wrong, negative. And that further causes the hesitation in your life. Suffering pain and grief when temporary things change. Uh, did I tell you that, you know, that woman last year, she said, you know, I'm grieving for what? I'm grieving for the last one week uh, because, you know, she's an immigrant from uh, UK. So I'm grieving for Queen Elizabeth died for the last one week. Really? Think, think. I'm just, I'm not saying that uh, I have to be concerned. Suffering, pain, and the grief when temporary things change. Wasting time finding fleeting joy in transient achievements. I divorce, you know, I have a lot of challenges. So where I'm sitting, I'm sitting in a bar with a beer or a wine or vodka. Ah, so you are finding a solution. Very good. So again, look at the lifestyle. No, I started drinking only after the divorce. Try to understand me. I don't want to understand you. <laughs> Why should I understand? <laughs> Think of these attitude. They are the fixed notion. I have to challenge these false notion. Relationship. Think of the relationship delusion. Unfulfilling connections based on superficial roles and identities in relationship. Unnecessary. Turbulence from unmet expectations. Nothing is permanent, but you know, I'm in turmoil. Lasting, losing people and the things assumed to be stable pillars of my life. Think of this. They are very hard facts. Losing people and the things. I can lose anything, I can lose people. Assumed to be stable pillars in my life. My mom has gone, my dad has gone, my uncle has gone. Yesterday, I was, my mind went to uh, my grandfather with whom I used to play chess. Gone. After a few years, this is also gone. <laughs> so, temporary. I have to, universal law. And what about at the professional level? You have the delusion. You have a situational frustration. Situational frustration when goals imagined is not achieved. Situational problem. Burnout, chasing false measures of security in titles and wealth and the prestige. Disillusionment when assumed metrics of achievement becomes inadequate. You know, I dream, you know, this is my level of achievement, but it is not happening. I should have five million followers. What a great craziness. I think these are the different delusional aspects that affects our mental relationship, profession, and every day in my life. That is why I say I am absolutely busy. When I start the session, can I say I am absolutely busy? It means I am projecting the future. But why I am projecting the future? Because there is a sense of emotional dependence. But why there is a sense of emotional dependence? Because there is a false assumption. What is this false assumption? Foolishness. No, I'm not saying, but you know, but make it clear that when people say to me that I'm awfully busy. Now, casually you say, no, I'm busy today. It's okay. It's a part of the, you know, I have a session today, so I cannot meet tomorrow. I cannot meet you. 
But if you have created a label that I am fully busy, you are definitely foolish. Thank, thank my friends. The next year we are just moving now. We are taking up the subjects in a different way. So instead, I changed the title. Instead of delusion, I said ignorance to wisdom. Ignorance is the root cause. Ignorance is the root cause. Think, contemplate, reflect after listening and learning. Pick up these five factors. Only one thing I tell you that the moment you find anxiety, duality, conflict, headache, any sort of these challenges, I have to challenge the false assumption. That is because of the delusion. Remember these, these teachings of the masters, and you will see the minds, the mindset changes. So when the emotional dependence, intellectual paralysis, and the very selfishness that ego breaks up, you can break up intellectually, you will find that you are free. There and then. Then you have a headache, then take care of the headache at the physical level. <clears throat> Close your eyes and let us start our practice. Eyes are closed, being comfortable and being carefree. Now, today I will reveal. Uh, many people have understood. When I say being comfortable, being carefree, means what? You have dropped the false assumption. First, the foolishness, the false assumption. First factor. Why? The body is inert. It is the mind that perceives that it is not comfortable. <laughs> See that. What it means, you live in a higher level of awareness. You are living at a higher level of awareness. That means you are comfortable and you are carefree. And instead of any remembering, reminding any form of anxiety, duality, and a conflict. What do you remember? Sarvesham swastir bhavatu. In the beginning, I know that it will not happen, but gradually these thoughts and the mantra will assimilate, will merge into your psyche. Sarvesham swastir bhavatu. Sarvesham swastir bhavatu, may there be happiness for all. So will my mind do the foolishness? Answer is no. Will create a false assumption? No. Mind will say no. The same mind will say no. Why? You are in the state of discernment. Sarvesham Shantir Bhavatu, Sarvesham Shantir Bhavatu, Sarvesham Shantir Bhavatu. Now, antidote. May there be peace for all. In Kundalini, we understand <coughs> there is there are two factors, energy and prana and the mind. And if the mind moves down because the prana is pushing you to the lower centers, that causes the delusion, which is known in Kundalini as the lower desires, greed, anger, and hesitation, negativity, etc., etc. This oh, we are we are embarking on a very higher journey. <clears throat> because we are a seeker. We need not to go for Kundalini. Energy going down, mind picks up the delusion. Energy going up, mind picks up the discernment. And peace. Sarvesham Puranam Bhavatu Sarvesham Puranam Bhavatu 
Sarvesham Puranam Bhavatu. May there be completeness in all. Declaration of sense of completeness comes from within, is helping not only the mind and the prana to move to the higher consciousness. First three centers, animal mind. Fourth makes you, fourth center, according to Kundalini, makes you a seeker. Higher level of a seeker, you are settled in the <coughs> third eye. <coughs> what is third eye? Discernment and dispassion. You see how our masters have have created the entire journey of different traditions to help each and every one. If you are too much clinging, you have, then obviously, then we will go for those Kundalini. Too much clinging. You claim that, you know, I cannot understand. You claim that you are foolish. Obviously, then we will go for there. Sarvesham Mangalam Bhavatu. Sarvesham Mangalam Bhavatu. May there be auspiciousness. Let there be a blessing for all. So when I say blessing for all, with whom I am attached, with whom I am detached, I loosen the hold of this attachment and detachment. What is this? Emotional dependence. And that what happens, you make the energy free. And whatever is left, that we make it free by the three breathing practices. Look inside the forehead in the space. Looking inside the forehead in the space, there you drop Om Shanti or Shanti Om. And Start breathing, quick and short breath into the chest through the nostrils. Start breathing, quick, short, gentle breath into the chest. Expansion of the chest and contraction will continue. Just continue. Now you see the flow of your doing the breathing practice goes unrestricted. No resistance is there. And even if resistance is there, you endure it. No, I will continue to do it. You say to your mind and keep on doing it. You have a variety of experiences. Don't get straight by these experiences. Simply recognize and accept these changes. Obviously, you're doing something, so changes are bound to come. We need not to worry. You will also discover that the mind frees the energy and you can even start doing faster and faster without any challenges. It will happen on its own. That's another step that we have to realize. Again, reminding you in the state of sensation, comfort, and steadiness in the body. Mind is dropping on Shanti deep inside in the space, 
inside the forehead and you are breathing into the rib case. Rib case expands and contracts. So you are aware of almost every aspect at this moment. What is in a passive state? What is an active state? Where you are dropping um, Shanti? And that is where it takes you to the higher level of awareness. Don't think it's a multitasking, no. Continue breathing the moment your mind wants to stop the breathing. That is what the resistance is. So first you remember you're dropping Om Shanti, check the steadiness in the body and then do it again. And st allow the breath to be normal. Stop Om Shanti. Do nothing. Become aware of the flow of the breath. If both are equal, wonderful. If one has a less flow of the breath, pay attention there. So the mind and the prana should go together and it will help to lift the prana from the lower to the higher centers. E even that step will do it. <clears throat> no, you experience the changes. We are purifying the mind. We, For the temporary period, we are asking the mind the, to think the way I'm asking you to think what that means, working on the mind. That is what we, that was the fifth remedy step. But at the same time, you keep an eye on the breath, which will help you to move deeper. And now, Look deep inside the forehead again in the space, Om Shanti. And now start breathing from the belly. This time, this is a little longer breath. <laughs> Shanti. 
Pay attention, you expand your belly during inhalation and contract your belly during exhalation. Continue breathing into the belly through the nostrils. Um, Shanti continues, the steadiness in the body also continues. Sometime you will discover the mind hesitate. Mind hesitate, it says, I don't want to do it. That is where I say, you just use the word, oh, let me endure it and continue doing it. We have to bypass those objections. How come, why we have, want to change the mind? Continue, my friends. Continue. Belly breathing, you are aware of expansion and the contraction of the belly in the state of steadiness in the body, aware of the space and dropping home shanti. And mind has the ability to be aware of all these factors, only the human mind. We are self-aware. So are we increasing our Self-awareness, yes, that is the good. And stop this breathing, allow the breath to be normal, no mantra, awareness of the body, sensation and stillness, awareness of the breath, flow of the breath, pay attention there as if you are almost in a state of doing nothing. Continue to be aware of the flow of the breath. That awareness of the flow of the breath, as I said, I'm repeating it again, it helps you to lift the energy from the lower to the higher centers. That is why we experience relaxation and a calmness after the breathing. Let the sign say what it says. We follow over Eastern wisdom. We agree with them also. So very subtle process takes place. That needs to be understood. And now is the time to drop the Om Shanti on the 16 segments of your fingers, provided that all of our senses lives in the mind.
the mind's eye looks at the first segment, mind's skin touches it, and it, then it minds, mind's tongue sees Om Shanti, and you feel, sometimes you feel a tremendous energy vibrations all around the fingers or all around the body also. It's okay. That is where the science has no answer. And we have an experiential learning. Om Shanti. Again, I told you, we discussed that part. You can even say Om Shanti on only one segment. And you may feel a kind of self-absorption. Two factors. There's a mixed nature of the mind. The mind may fatally say that you are absorbed and you are getting carried away by some thought, or you are really absorbed, you feel a sense of freedom. So that is why we are continuing even for a little longer period that step. And sometimes it's a sense of freedom. So any sense of fr freedom can come in any way. Whether you are doing Om Shanti or Om Shanti, Om Shanti, Om Shanti. And now leave this, go deep inside the cave of your heart, equilateral triangle of any color, moving the mind on a triangle with Om Shanti, Om Shanti, Om Shanti, clockwise, anti-clockwise. So when you feel that you are sinking, uh, it's a fr out of the freedom, you are able to move Om Shanti on a triangle. That is the moment. Push the mind with a deep inside the cave of your heart. Mind seemingly stops. Drop Shanti. If it doesn't happen, you can return to the triangle again.
Shanti Shanti So when there is a kind of self-absorption, you have left Om Shanti, you have left the mantra, you have left all the teaching, you have left everything. But it takes time. Shanti 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 Bring your mind on the right hand, your mind on the left hand. Lift your both the palms, place it on your eyes, open the eyes inside. Know your experiences, bring the hands down. We'll share your experiences if you have any questions. Yes, David, how are you? Thank you. Good to be back, sir. Good to be back. Um, the um, lesson for me was endurance. I've got a, a wee head cold, and um, but I just endured, planned on your word of endurance and just the breathing, the fast breathing. Uh, 
although difficult in the beginning, by the end of it, it became very, very smooth and easy. And then the rest of the meditation just kind of flowed to a very deep, open, indigo space. So endurance led to peacefulness. Thank you. You see, yeah, yeah. You have realized the endurance. And when the delusion, any form of the delusion, even that the physical level, we have a problem, we keep on doing it. I have tried hundreds of times, and every time there is a seasonal affected disorder, you keep on doing it, and the nostrils become clear. Beautiful. Indigo color shows this kind of self-absorption. Beautiful. How are you, Jerry? Um, Thank you, sir. I'm good. Um, you also yeah. have cold. Uh, maybe a little congestion. Not too bad. <laughs> um, it was a really nice, deep meditation. Um, my takeaway from the lesson... Uh, was to always focus on our ourselves, our true nature, keep our focus there, keep our attachment there. Um, and it really stuck with me or or um, resonated when whenever someone says, oh, I'll do this for you, or I need to be different with you, or I need to increase my awareness with you. It's, it's really they they need to just point the finger back at themselves and and it's not it's not our place to necessarily point that out yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. but it's an easy pointer once we're kind of aware of that when we blame or complain like you always say just turn it back to ourselves when there is a self-awareness you are settled in yourself in the moment you are settled in yourself, you always experience the sense of freedom. Pointing at this obviously results into all the, any of these seven factors and all the seven factors. It's a beautiful way to explain it. How are you, Terry? Oh. I'm, I was interested in the five solutions. Yeah. But then I lost the internet for a minute. So I missed some of it. <laughs> you and already I, remember it. So you endure it. Endure yeah. the internet and continue remembering them. <laughs> um, um, Allah. <laughs> yeah, I think I was pretty... I think I fell asleep. Okay. But I'm not sure. So when I, uh, but, um, yeah, it was just a pretty deep meditation. Pretty deep. Very good. That is the way it should be. Very good. Thank you. How are you, Samir? Sir, it was very quiet and uh, it seemed like meditation is coming from inside, flowing outside. It's like yeah. that. Yeah. It was something oozing from inside me and flowing yeah. in the body. And it yeah, was yeah. Very peaceful. Very it's, peaceful. I can really and, understand. Entire journey of human life, when you say awakening or realization, it is just from inside outside. It is never outside inside. And once we understand we are settled into that state, the life changes completely. Beautiful. How are you, Christina? Namaste. I finding again, just like Saturday, being brought to tears and laughter and um, the realization, I think, that we've never really learned the true um, lesson, you know, maybe it's here in, a, in the United States, often, right, attachment and that if, if only we all learned much earlier. And anyway, I'm feeling a sense, a newfound sense of a deeper sense of freedom. That's really good. Deeper sense of the freedom. 
obviously everywhere, including the, our country, United States, we always think in terms of the false assumptions. And once I think in terms of the false assumptions, these seven factors takes over our life, our personal life, our professional life, our social life, our family life, and then we are absolutely busy, agitated, anxious, duality, conflict constantly is there. And we try to find a solution, we cannot. There is no solution. Solution lies inside only. How are you, Dennis? <clears throat> Thank you. Peace, calmness, equal breathing, and deep, dark space and thoughtlessness at the end. Yes, that's really beautiful. And I'm um, just addressing to you all, you all should be aware of the flow of the breath during the day. <clears throat> or whenever you have an anxiety or conflict or hesitation, you just become aware of the flow of the breath and see how it works. That is another way to work on it. You know, Dennis has pointed out. How are you, Ashok, sir? Sir, Namaste. <laughs> sir, I am good. <laughs> good, peaceful, and uh, calm, quite calm. And meditation was good. Meditation was good. Very Thank good. You. I don't know. Uh, Stephen, I think we lost the internet. Stephen might have lost the internet. That is all for today. We'll meet again. Thank, Thank you. Thank you, sir. Namaste, everyone. Namaste. Namaste.